Good morning guys, welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. Hope everybody's having a fantastic morning. And don't mind these roosters, man. They got something going on out there. I got three roosters that run around the farm and at this time of morning they all get to fighting on who can be the loudest it seems. Anyway, we got a fun field video planned for you today. We're gonna be talking about onions. We're gonna be talking about our short day onions that we start in the summertime and transplant out into the fall to overwinter and harvest the next spring. I know that sounds like it's got complicated written all over it, but really it's not. It's just a long time. It takes a long time to grow these bulbs through the wintertime. And you've heard me say in the past that, you know, due to our mild winters, we are able to grow some crops year round. Onions are one of those. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna share with you three tips that's gonna help you be successful with onions no matter where you grow them at. Short day, long day, intermediate day, doesn't matter. As long as you kind of stick to these guidelines, you'll be successful at growing onions. All right guys, so tip number one is variety. The variety, when I talk about variety, I'm talking about the type of onion that you're planting. Um, you need to know what grows on or not specifically grows on, but you need to know what area of the continent, world, whatever you want to call it, you need to know where you are as far as latitude, longitude, and you need to plan accordingly. Um, you have three different types of onions. Long day, short day, intermediate day. And you guys have always heard this. I got a freaking gnat hanging around here. But you guys have always heard this whenever it comes to now. Variety does matter. It makes a huge difference. Um, if you plant long day onions in a short day onion um, zone, then you will never have enough light to get the onion to make a bigger bulb. Bulb size is directly related to day length. And in the spring, we know as daylight is ramping up, you know, we're getting longer days. That is what triggers your bulbing process in an onion. So here in the south, during the spring, early spring, March, April-ish, that is when we start to see um, a lot of our crops just explode with growth and that has that has a direct relation to the amount of light they're receiving um now we, we're into the 10 hour mark early in january and february but towards like i said march and april when it starts warming up outside everything's growing good um that's when the daylight crosses into the 11 ish 12 ish mark and what we want to do is have enough greens on our onions to help fuel the bulbing process once they cross into that 12 hour mark. So we're shooting to have big onion tops, you know, early in the spring. So when that light level triggers the bulbing process, the greens have already um, established themselves and then they can put all this energy into making a bulb. And I know it sounds like I'm rambling, but there is, you know, a direct relation with day length and bulb size. So here in the south, right around the North Carolina, Virginia line is the breaking point between short day and intermediate day. And um, we live in the lower part of North Carolina, almost in South Carolina. So we can grow short day onions here. And there's, you know, literally hundreds of varieties of short day onions you can grow. And I call them short day, but most of those onion varieties are around the 100, 115 day mark um, to maturity. And if you overwinter them, Go ahead and tack on another 100 days. That's just how long it takes these onions to grow. So you're looking at a crop that could literally take nine months to grow if, you know, um, you get the right variety. So we plant our onions and our garlic at just about the same time. Garlic is just a little bit later. Um, but generally, onions go in the ground late September, early October. Garlic goes in the ground late October, early November. That's just the rule of thumb that we've always used. And with that being said, that gives us a very long time to put on a substantial amount of greens before the bulbing process actually begins. Now, I can't very well speak. I have grown intermediate day onions and did okay. But, um, you know, once I finally honed in my onion skills, you know, I stuck with short day variety simply because they are what grows the best here. Now, like I said, we are on the upper end of the short day onion zone. So our harvest is going to come a little later in the year you know typically around late may early june is when we're going to start harvesting onions all right so we said we were going to start with three tips variety was the first tip 
Now, the second tip is starting your onions on time. Starting your onions to where you do have enough time to get them established and actually grow enough tops to, you know, be able to fuel that bulb or that bulbing process when it starts. So what I've got here is two short day varieties. One is a grano type, uh, a granite type, um, short day sweet onion, and it's a 1015Y Texas Super Sweet. And this onion here is, I mean, there's a lot of variations of it. Basically, you're talking a candy onion, you're talking a walla walla onion, a vade onion, about the same process, it's just um, different names. Just different names, different characteristics. That's where you get that from. And we've got a red Creole onion. So red onions, sweet onions. And we're gonna start probably, I don't know, two, three trays of each. And I'm gonna start these in 338 cells. This means, you know, we got 338 cells per tray. And there's a reason for that because when we start onions or when we transplant onions, we transplant a lot of onions. And I'm talking to the tune of thousands of onions. And um, it just makes more sense to have those onions in a smaller capacity. But, you know, I'm gonna show you what I used to start onions in. I used to start them in these 512s. That's a 512. And you can see there's a lot of cells in that tray. But the problem with this is that, like now, we're starting onions in the summer. And one big thing about the 512 is you can start a ton of onions in these things. You can start 2,000 onions in that tray. But the problem is keeping it wet, keeping it hydrated, keeping it moist. They dry out really, really, really fast. And I, stay, I said last year I wasn't going to do that anymore simply because you had to constantly irrigate those trays just to keep the onion starts alive. So I switched over to a 338 and haven't looked back. It's just one of those things to where it holds enough moisture you can start a ton of seeds in these things we're planning on probably starting at least five seeds per cell onions don't mind having their roots mess with that much um so for one of these plugs if we start five onion starts in each one of these cells i mean we're looking upwards of 1500 onions just in that one tray so it's easy to see that you know just two trays alone we into 3000 uh onion mark but going into this season, I think we're going to need a lot more than that because last year I did 3,000 onions and I'm already sold out. I done sold every onion that I grew last year. So, you know, we're going to need upwards of 5,000, I'm thinking. So I got three trays planted or three trays planned here. And, you know, we're going to probably do five, six uh, seeds per sale. So you can see we're going to get plenty of onions out of these three trays. And we may even do more than that. I may even go five. I got some 242s in there that I could use. I got some 200 cells over here that I could use, and I got a ton of seeds, so I'm not worried about that. But just for the sake of this video, we're gonna work on this first tray, and what I'm gonna use is Pro Mix. You can see over here, and I'm gonna sift this and try to get the bigger stuff out. And like I said, this stuff's pretty easy to work with, but you still get an occasional stick in there once in a while, and you just don't want that in your, your trays because it causes issues with your roots and for your seedlings to emerge. So we're gonna work that in and get it sifted out really good. And then we're gonna load this tray up with this soil. Now this stuff here, I mean, it's not soaking wet, but I mean, it's, it's easy to work with. Um, it wets down pretty easy. And I really have never had any issues starting seeds with this light, fluffy. Doesn't have a lot of big material in it. So you can see this is what we're working with. And really all I'm gonna do is take my scoop. And work that in the tray, try to get every one of these cells kind of even out. over here and I'll drop this thing a couple times to help it settle out you see how much they went down you see onion seeds are not 
incredibly huge. I don't know if y'all can see that very well. But, and a bunch of onions, about the same way, about the same size, maybe just a tick smaller. But right now, what we're going to do is dimple all of these trays. Well, trays, all of these sails. I'm going to go through and I'm basically just going to put an indention. Not going to go crazy deep. And I've never really had a problem with onions germinating. They seem to just pop out regardless of how deep you put them. I mean, I imagine you probably could put them too deep, but you know, as long as you are, and I usually go about the end of my finger now, and as long as you keep them within like a quarter inch, you should be fine. Now, like I said, don't get confused because I start a lot of onions. I'm starting a lot of onions this year, but if you're doing just like, you know, one tray or one, you know, four cell pack or whatever, you can use the same principle. I mean, it's nothing. You can bend the rules a little bit and put more seeds in a cell if you're doing just like a four cell tray or whatever and just spread them out don't put them on top of each other just spread them out pretty evenly and then once they get up to some size you can actually uh, tease them apart and plant them individually see that's what we're planning on doing here is we're going to start 1500 1800 onions in this tray and then when they get yay big we get ready to put them out in the garden we're going to tease them apart and we're going to plant them individually so we're going to have one onion start every four to six inches i haven't really decided yet i normally do uh three wide six inches apart on 100 foot rows but this year i'm thinking i'm gonna do four wide four inches apart on 100 foot rows just so i can get more onions in a bed because we're going to plant on landscape fabric or plastic mulch one of the two and try to help with the weed competition and that is going to bring me to another tip other than three that onions do not like weeds they really when you start your transplants and you get them in the garden um putting them in a place to where you can cultivate and control the weeds because the the tip to getting big healthy onions is keeping the weeds at bay and you're going to start these things in a time of year to where you still have weed competition so you're going to have to go through cultivate plant your onions and you're going to have to keep cultivating until it gets cool enough or cold enough to keep the weeds you know pushed down if you will just think of that as a little bonus cultivation weed control bonus tip all right so now that we got the cells dibbled we're going to start planting and basically i'm going to just put a handful get a handful of seeds and i'm going to go through and try to get just four or five per cell and this can move either slow or quick, depends on how many you want to put in there. <clears throat> and like I said, there's no rocket science to it. It's just trying not to overcrowd it. And that can prove to be difficult sometimes. Now I'm doing is getting a pinch in the finger full I'm gonna think it may be about what I want to put in there and just sprinkling it in and then what we'll do is go back and put some soil on top of this and water these guys in all right guys so we got all the seeds in the tray and what I'm doing now is putting a label on it so I know when I started it and I know what variety that is in this tray and we're gonna put them out here on the rack we're gonna water them in and when we get all the other ones done I still probably got about six more trays to do but you know, I done covered these back up. So all we gotta do now is put them out here on one of those racks, water them in, and wait on them to germinate. And that brings me to the tip number three. And this is feeding your onions. I can't say enough about feeding them. And when I say feeding them, I mean more of a nitrogen-based fertilizer or a nitrogen-based um, organic feeding schedule, whatever you wanna call it. Onions need to be fed. They are heavy feeders. They're almost in line with cabbage and broccoli and things of that nature. So when you see these seedlings popping up, what they're going to do is they're going to pop up and they're going to look like a little, I don't know, horseshoe. They're going to be like an L. They're going to sit in the tray like this and then slowly but surely they're going to pop up. Once you see them guys start to pop out of there into a single, um, pretty much stalk, start feeding them. Give them, start them off on a low dose fertilizer. I like to use a triple 20 on most everything when it's in the seedling stage. That way it's a balanced fertilizer, but start them off with a nitrogen-based fertilizer and just keep putting it to them. 
they are going to absorb it. They're going to grow like crazy. What we're looking for, these guys are in trades this uh, the end of uh, July right now. We're looking at putting these guys in the ground late September, early October. So we got a good eight, eight to ten weeks of growth that we can get out of these onions. And they're going to germinate pretty quick out here. I mean, we got days in the 90s coming up. So they're probably going to germinate here in about four or five days. And when they do, we're going to start hitting them with triple 20 like we are all of our cold season crops. And try to get as much green growth on these guys while they're still in the tray before we transplant them. But guys, I hope that gives you a little more in-depth uh, view of onions and how we plant onions here in North Carolina. Like I said, it's generally a little different wherever you go. Yeah, you can get away with planting onions in the spring around here. And once we start growing these onions, we'll talk more about different ways that you can plant and transplant onions and what times of the year you can get away with it. But right now, we find it better and easier for us to do it in the fall. Just because, I mean, we can get more bang for our buck and we can, seems like we grow a sweeter, better a tasting onion. That's just my opinion. And, I mean, we've heard it from people at market. All right, guys, I think this is where we're going to end the video. I got to get busy. But if you found anything useful, anything entertaining, or you just want to know more about our farm, click this subscribe button over here. As always, guys, we appreciate you stopping by. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.